395 Junkie in the uh, garage about to get going on uh, my newest addition to our 2016 Jeep Rubicon JKU and if you've seen some of our videos you understand that we do uh, quite a bit of overlanding, uh, camping, uh, day trips and uh, we tend to bring uh, you know what I consider the necessities but at the same time ends up being uh, a lot of items and if you have a Jeep you know that there's probably not a lot of room for all of your gear without it kind of getting all over the place so uh, what Goose Gear does will allow you to install this platform system remove two-thirds of your rear seat and uh, have a much more squared up interior with a rear platform, a bottom platform for you to mount your fridge slider on, um, have some cubbies where you can put some of your recovery gear in there. So what you see here is that system. And from what I'm told from Goose Gear is this is uh, number nine or 10 off of their assembly line. It's a new product they have, which will cover the 60% seat platform um, that is that you'll be able to see from the passenger side so instead of it being open and all the way through this will give it more of a finished uh, closed look so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna unwrap everything get it all laid out um, before I do that I just wanted to give a huge shout out to Goose Gear uh, John over there at Goose Gear was real instrumental in getting all these items for me these are made to order based on exactly uh, the product that and the vehicle you're getting it for and I gotta say, this isn't just for Jeep. Goose Gear makes it for Toyota, Lexus, uh, Chevy, Ford, Jeep, uh, you name it. They've got a lot of different products uh, for all different types of vehicles. So I really encourage you to go to their website, goosegear.com, uh, take a look around, and uh, you'll be amazed at the products that they uh, are, have the ability to make for you. So let's get to it. I'm super excited. It's Saturday morning and uh, maybe we can knock this out in one day depending on how many other distractions I get throughout the day. Um, but this should be a fairly simple install and uh, let me show you what we got. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start taking apart uh, the plastics, taking out the pieces that we don't need, and uh, let's get the install going. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, take out this tab, which uh, I understand you can uh, take it out properly and be able to use it again, but. I have no interest in doing that for the take, sake of time and I don't ever plan on putting this thing back the way it was. So we're going to take that off right now and uh, move on to the next step. Alright, next on the list is we need to remove these plastic trim pieces around the roll bar and uh, as I understand it this part will pop out that side but there's a bolt back here that we have to be careful not to mess up. So. Looks like a little seat belt trim. We'll just leave that there for now. Let's do the other side. All right, so now we got this side to do. Well, that side came off a whole lot easier. All right, next thing we need to do is we need to remove the 10 millimeter bolt that's holding this plastic piece in. So let's do that next. Now on the passenger side. All right, now that we have both nuts off, what we got to do is we need to move these plastic pieces on each side. Get a little tug. Oops. Uh, so, that just happened. Uh, what I should have done when I pulled that out was lifted it up and then pulled. And I just broke that. But I don't think we're going to use that piece anymore anyway. So, we're good. Alright, so now on this side, this is going to be a little bit 
different, a little tougher because when you take this off, you know, you can only pull it out a little bit because you have your 12 volt accessory uh, if you have it. Some Jeeps have them, some Jeeps don't. Um, so what you're gonna wanna do is when you pull this out, lift up, pull out a little bit and just pull it out far enough to where you can reach behind there, release the clip so it can pop out. Um, I've got one extra step on mine though because I have this switch right here that you might be able to see light up that I wired a light that goes on that rear uh, glass that flips up. So I'm gonna have to do both those parts. A lot easier when you lift up. Turn that off. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we need to move some of this wiring harnesses away um, to get to a couple studs that need to be ground down and just clean things up here a little bit now that I've got the side panel off. And this is a wire that goes to my uh, rear camera, so we'll have to work around that for the time being. But as you can see, you've got these three studs. One, two, three. Next step is to dremel those off. All right, now that they're grounded off, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take uh, some sort of uh, another grinder and just kind of take the sharp edges off all three of these. Now what we need to do is, uh, I already removed my uh, tailgate hinge right here that connects to make sure this doesn't open all the way because my EVO spare tire carrier has stops on the other side. So I just never installed it and some of the older model Jeeps don't have them anyway. So figure it's not that important and uh, don't need it. So, But what you still need to do regardless, you need to take out these four bolts right here and then this will be installed back on the goose gear. So let's get that done real quick. And it looks like these four bolts are also uh, torque 30. All right, now what we need to do is we need to pop these two uh, zip ties out of the body. All right, now that we have all the interior pieces uh, disassembled that needs to be done, now we can start working on installing the side cubbies. So basically what we need to do is we need to remove this most forward uh, nut that's holding the top on. You're going to replace it with a longer uh, bolt that they give you, a nylon nut, and a uh, another bracket. So let's go ahead and get that done right now. All right, so now that that's done, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, uh, the longer bolt that they give you, you're gonna pull this carpet back, it'll give you a little bit of room, you can see what you're working with. Uh, move these wires out of the way, I'm not sure if you can see, but there's a bunch of wires here. Some of these are to my rear light, so you may not have as many as I, but what you wanna do is you wanna screw this in. And be sure not to tighten it too much, so I got that done, I'll just use the ratchet. Now you take the bracket, the bigger circle side with the uh, extrusion facing down, put it up there, and kind of tight quarters, but from here what you gotta do is take that nylon nut and start putting it on. All right, so what we actually want to do is we want to go ahead and tighten it down just a little bit so it's still, it, it's tighter, but you can still maneuver it. So you can use either a socket or an open-ended ratchet, uh, but I'm gonna use a ratcheting wrench here. All right, so now it's mounted on there. Still got a little bit of play in there, which is what you want. All right, now that that's installed, what we need to do is disconnect the uh, windshield wiper washer uh, hose and the electrical here. So just make sure you push in that red tab before you pull down. 
All right, so this red tab, I'm not sure if that's in the way, but you can take this red tab, push it out till it clips, clicks, push down on this black tab, and it should come right out. Now we can uh, get this installed or attempt to install it. I just noticed I have another wire right there that might get in the way. This is the vertical piece for the platform, so looks like it goes in like this and backs into that. I know we got to remove this rubber grommet. Uh, let me see what's going on with that wiring up there. It looks like it might just be able to stay out of the way, which is good. Oh man, that already looks clean. So we got to move this grommet out of the way. in there all right so now what we need to do is take these front end cover pieces and uh, there's some t-nuts in the back you'll want to loosen them up with your allen wrench so there's a little bit of play in them and they're gonna slide right down this channel that they put in there and from what the instructions say it could be a tight fit so uh, let's hope for the best That wasn't too bad and it sits flush right on top now here's something to uh, take note of uh, they say that this is a good place to put the USB or any sort of auxiliary power but I've got a bunch of power already uh, wired in this thing I have some power in the front there and I've got uh, some outlets in the back here that you might have seen so I don't really need that I've got the Jackery as well that helps charge items so we're just going to keep it clean and uh, save myself a little bit of work. So once that's in there flush, what you want to do is tighten them up. And we are good to go. All right, now that we got that front plate on, uh, what we need to do next is we have to take the top plate here and disassemble it just a little bit and get it installed. So And then there's four more screws here that we need to take out. That's got one of those T-nuts on there. So when you take them off, you want to be careful not to lose the T-nuts. All right, now that that's done, what we need to do is we need to set this on top here and want to go behind the seat belt. And there's these aluminum channels here that we're going to slide those T-nuts in in order to line it up. So let's get this put in here. Well, I'm going to keep screwing with this. And once I get them all started, I'll come back to you guys. All right. So now what we got to do is we're going to use the bolt that came with the bracket that we previously installed. Um, when we replace the bolt for the roof, that's going to drop through this hole here. You're going to reach under there and kind of fish it through until bingo. And we are good to go. We're going to give these another final tightening. Nice and snug. And that looks clean. All right. And the precision on this is amazing. These guys really know what the hell they're doing. I mean, it is damn near flush along the whole way. Back here. All right, so now all we gotta do is put these uh, cover pieces on top here. Now that it's kind of put it around there. It's really self-explanatory. I don't know why I'm telling you guys. 
that sits in right there. Move the seat belt. I just tighten them each one up real good. And now this here, they say to clip this pin off because it gets in the way. Now we just need to put the cover on, which is lockable. Goes in like that. Done. All right, so now moving on to the passenger side. So I'll move that carpet back in there. All right, so now we just put this wiring through the harness there. Move the gasket out, the grommet here, molding. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna install that end cap there we go we need to take off the cover here the lid to it all right so these get set aside uh, we got to put these things on Man, this, again, I can't say enough about this precision cut, man. They really nailed it over there at Goose Gear. Those guys are real nice. Ugh. Totally went out of their way, made sure all my questions were answered. Which they were. Uh, first reached out to Brian. I think, you know, Brian handles all the internet. Brian's the owner of Goose Gear, and my understanding, these guys started off, well, Brian did, third generation cabinet maker, something like that, and uh, he ended up taking all his knowledge from making cabinets and uh, looked at his, I think he was rolling a Toyota, from what I was being told, and they were out camping, him and his daughter, and... I and mean, I think you know where the story goes from there. They had a bunch of stuff everywhere. Took his knowledge with making cabinets and Goose Gear was formed. Just gotta put the cover on here. Voila, done. All right, I'm gonna clean this mess up. I might grab a beer. Saw my neighbor grabbing a beer. He's building himself a shed. This guy's incredible. Woodwork, working on cars, metal. It's a jack of all trades. It's a great neighbor to have. I'll tell you that right now. Anyways, I saw him drinking a beer and maybe I want to go drink a beer right now. So I'm going to clean up this mess, get myself resituated, getting ready for the exciting part, and we'll be back with you in a little bit. All right, so as you can tell, uh, I couldn't resist the urge to grab myself a beer. Um, took a little bit of a break finished the side cubbies which was uh not really that difficult but it's just cumbersome took a little bit needed to be perfect so uh the electrical took me a little while to get it just the way i wanted it and out of the way um so now we're going to move on to the rear storage uh the rear the rear floor system the platform and uh we'll see how it goes from here so let's get to work All right. I'm wondering if we should take the seat out first. All right. Let's get her done. Gotta go in sideways. Down nice and neat. Let's see if we can back. All right.
That looks good. But the question is, how do you know when these are lined up? barely see through there. God damn. Precision. Looks like you can see all the holes there. Alright, so now that we have the base plate installed, we're going to ins use the four bolts that they gave us. And we're going to hopefully drop them right into each hole. I used a flashlight and it looks like at least this one was lined up. Nailed it, I think. Yeah. There's two more up here. Not nailed it. Let's try this side. Pretty sure that bit. Yep. Yeah. Alright, so I came to the conclusion I needed to take that rear platform out, which I tried not to do, but I think in order to get the 60% out, you gotta take the 100% out and then put the 40% back in. I think. Uh, not real good instructions on this part, so kind of figuring it out as we go. So I took out the top bolt over here. I took out that nut. I got one more nut here I need to take out real quick. Some of these nuts come off real easy, and the bolts seem to not come off easy. All right, so now what we're doing is securing the... 40% back in here with the the bolts it came with. Oh, I'm sorry, with the bracket it came with. I'm getting delirious here. God, I hope I'm doing this right. Torque it like they torque it without stripping it. <sighs> mm. All right, now that we have the 60% out and the 40% back in, still not entirely sure how that uh, the 40%, uh, I'm sorry, the 60% platform gets installed. So what I think I need to do is just install this platform back in there and then just kind of uh, eyeball it and see what comes of it. So let's get this platform back in. All right, so what I think I figured out is, based on my experience of how those side cubbies went in, you gotta use these uh, T-nuts and slide them in this track. There we go, good. I wanna tighten them up real quick. What I'm tightening is the T-nuts so they don't fall out again. There's one. All right, so I skipped a step that I need to talk about here. Uh, because I have the side piece here, uh, the only way you can get this on here is you gotta slide it in the uh, channel. And the only way I could slide it in the channel is by taking this uh, middle uh, platform back out. So I'm gonna take this back out. I'm gonna slide this in with the T, 
uh, the T-nuts in there, tighten it all down, and once I get that done, I'll bring it back live to you again. Staying positive, this is fun. All right, so we got the side mounted in here. Uh, you can see it just, I had to put the track in there and close it off, and it closes off really nice. It's real clean. You don't gotta worry about anything getting in there, any dirt. Uh, you could take these tops off and get in there, and I'll do a full walk around in the morning once I finish everything up, but just got a few more bits and pieces to do, and uh, we'll go from there. Well, here we are Sunday morning, and um, pretty much all done. Uh, we took about, I don't know, 10, 11 hours yesterday to complete the install 100%. Um, that included all the electrical, running all the wires, doing, having to do some more drilling. I really want to thank Goose Gear for working with me and answering a ton of questions that I had with this thing and understanding exactly which components I needed. They were very helpful throughout the whole process. Pretty excited to put the slider in for the fridge, get the fridge installed, and some of our normal basic uh, camping gear. Uh, we have a camping trip coming up this weekend, so as soon as we're done with this video, I'm going to load everything up, mount the fridge, and see how great of storage solutions this really is. So. All right, so here is the finished product. We've got the uh, Goose Gear rear platform that was installed. And I went with the subwoofer option. And inside here is the spare tire uh, jack. And uh, all you have to do is pull out those uh, two little Allen screws and that pops out. These are the side cubbies on the passenger side. Um, up here you've got, uh, you know, uh, just the top of the cubby. You've got a little storage container right there where that'll pop open and you'll be able to use that for additional storage. In the back here I did my own little upgrades. This here is for my switch for the light that goes on my tailgate glass. And then this is just an auxiliary uh, power outlet that you can use for charging. This side is pretty much the same thing with the cubby. You've got, uh, you know, storage up here on the top, like on the other side. So down here we've got the side cover uh, that uh, Goose Gear now makes in order for you to uh, cover whatever you have in there. That storage previously used to just be wide open. You've got your two storage containers here. You got one right there. You got another one right there. And then you can see all the open area we have now for all of my gear. And let me pop these open. You can see the type of storage you have in there. I've got my recovery gear in there, some emergency blankets, my wench controller, a tarp, my uh, battery jumper, soft shackles, and a bunch more. And then on this side, we've got just miscellaneous gear. We've got our jackery, a couple tree hammocks, some lights, a shovel, my speaker, some propane tanks, and a bunch more that you can't see because it goes all the way underneath. But overall, I'm super pleased with the install. It was pretty seamless. Any struggles that I had was uh, generally user error. So. Again, Daniel, 395 Junkie Garage. Appreciate you guys joining me, and be sure to click like and subscribe. And we've got all kinds of videos between some of our overlanding trips, some upgrades, I've got some uh, serious work ahead of me on my wife's uh, 2018 JL two-door Rubicon that I've got the lift, tires, uh, bumper, wench. Uh, we got a bunch of install that's going to be happening in this garage here in the next 30 days or so. So uh, stick with us and uh, follow us on our next adventure.